Hey guys, it's CWH here, and welcome back to Game Breakers. This time I want to look at one of my favorite racing games, Mario Kart Double Dash. My friends and I would always mess around with this game, coming up with challenges or just duking it out in the battle mode. This game also has some pretty good glitches in it like out of bounds, lap skips, and invincibility. So let's get into the glitches. Up first is one of the more popular glitches this game has to offer. Choose any characters you want, but make sure you choose the parade cart as it's the only one this glitch will work with. Now select Rainbow Road as the course. I'd highly recommend time trials as you can access the course right away and you don't have to worry about other players or items. Drive around normally until the big spiral turn on the bottom left corner of the course. Turn your cart so it's parallel to the edge of the track. Slowly drive upwards and just as you start to tip off the side, let go of all the buttons. You should clip through a part of the track with your cart on both sides of it. It can be fun screwing around with this one seeing what kind of results you can come up with. I tried it out in split screen to see what the glitch looked like from a different angle. I also picked up a star item and drove into them. They kind of front flip forward until the game placed them back on the track. Like I said earlier, the parade cart is required for this one as others will just get stuck up here. At the starting line of Mushroom Bridge, there's a pipe that you can get launched out of. If two carts enter the pipe at the exact same time, they'll be thrown out merged together, but then one will get pushed backwards and land in the little area technically out of bounds. It's not anything too crazy. You can drive through the end of the pipe, but you're pretty limited to this patch of grass. I was hoping to reach other areas, but invisible walls surrounded the entire area. Still on Martian Bridge, there's a way to mess with Lakitu and even make him disappear temporarily. Everyone knows that when you begin to drive the wrong way, Lakitu will kindly come down and guide you in the right direction. But this can be annoying with all the beeping and getting in your way if you just want to explore. And something else I noticed, is the little spinning light on his head supposed to look like a fez? Cause it sure looks that way. Anyway, from the starting line, turn around and start driving up the side of the bridge like this. You want the card to be dangling off the side which can cause a few things. Most commonly, at least for me anyway, was like it would completely disappear for a bit until catching back up to you. When I tried this on the other side of the bridge, I was able to make him slowly float further and further away from me across the bridge. He just kept going until I could only make out a few pixels of him. Then we kind of met halfway as I started driving closer and we joined back up. It wouldn't be a Mario Kart episode without showing off glitches that can skip portions of the track. In Waluigi Stadium, there's a pretty precise one. It takes place on the stretch where the rotating fire and piranha pipes are. Before going past the last pipe, start to drift around getting as close as you can to the piranha. Turn sharply so you drive up the ramp, bounce off the fence, and fly up into the air. If you do this correctly, the game will try and pick you back up like you landed out of bounds. It then places you on a track right before the last big jump. This gives a decent amount of the track allowing you to bring down your lap times. This glitch occurs because the game thinks you're hitting the out of bounds section like you miss a jump up top. By hitting the detection from down here, the game places you back up in the incorrect spot. Here's a side by side comparison of the skip in action. In Dry Dry Desert, you can pass through the finish line from out here in the sand. If you cross it on your final lap, the cart will turn and begin to drive in a straight line. If you just let it sit on the screen, you can see them bump into walls and other objects until they find the track and the game corrects itself. You can also die just as you cross the finish line, which will cause the game to act up a little bit, but nothing really too major. Now for a useful glitch. If a player is in the middle of a damage animation from another item as another racer activates lightning, they won't shrink. Normally when you get hit by lightning, it'll cause you to become tiny and drive slower. But if you run into an item right before, it won't affect you. This could actually be helpful if you see that your friend has a lightning item and you time it just right. In balloon battle mode, have at least three racers and choose any stage. Damage one so they only have one balloon left. Now have them positioned a little bit away from the item box. Hit them with an item so they go flying forward and land on the item box. If they despawn right on top of it, item boxes will infinitely spawn and disappear due to the dead player being there. You can still drive through yourself and pick up the boxes, but they won't stop spawning. Here's a useful trick you can do in Pipe Plaza. If you get hit by an item and the front flip animation plays as you're going through one of the pipes, you won't lose a balloon like you should. This could help out if you're in an intense battle with friends. The next three glitches all have two things in common. They take place in Bowser's Castle and involve blue shells. This one, however, you'll also need the parade cart. Have the player with the parade cart get close to the thwomp and have the other racer grab a blue shell. Just as the thwomp is ready to slam down, throw the blue shell. The timing can be a little tricky, but after the thwomp rises, it should look like this. You're now stuck in an infinite damage animation with the one character hanging on the back and the driver with both hands off the steering wheel waving them around. 
You can drive around this way and use items, but you cannot swap positions. So if you pick up one of those double item boxes, you won't be able to use the other. The state will be corrected as soon as you take damage again. Next one has an almost identical setup to the first. You need the parade cart, the thwomp, and a blue shell. This time you need to toss a blue shell as the thwomp reaches the top. The racers will flip up into the air and get crushed while upside down. They'll now be stuck this way with no way of getting up themselves. Throwing another blue shell doesn't even work. The only way to correct this is by having another player use lightning which will cause the shrunken cart to flip back up the right way. Using a blue shell you can skip about half of Bowser's castle. Once you start to near the finish line, veer off to the left and about a second before you go off the ledge, toss the blue shell. You should start to fall off the side as the shell hits you, sends you up into the air and more importantly into an out of bounds area from above. Lakitu will pick you up and place you on this part of the track and since you crossed the finish line as you were doing this, you now skip most of the next lap. Like the Waluigi Stadium skip, you get enough height to trick the game into thinking that you fell out of bounds from up here but in reality you didn't. So that's gonna do it for today's episode, if you enjoyed drop a like and subscribe. I want to thank everyone who moved over here from the old channel, it really meant a lot to me. But for now, I'm gonna get up out of here, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!